me. Six of May, dear children, do you like balls? Sandy and I love them. They are so nice and rolly, aren't they? <laughs> we asked Miss just the other day if she would buy us some new ones because Sandy has chewed our two into bits and pieces and they won't roll anymore. But she, but she wouldn't because she said Sandy would only spoil them again. So we thought we must look about and find some ourselves. <laughs> and we did. I'll tell you about it. There's a funny game called tennis that Mistress plays sometimes in the garden. Well, she has six balls to play with. What a waste, isn't it? Well, why can't the players do with one? It would be quite enough. Sandy and I watched the people playing and we longed to have a ball too. When everyone went into tea, the balls were all left on the court, doing nothing. So I said to Sandy, let's take them. We will leave them one to play with. That really is enough. We do need some new balls badly. So we took five of the balls and hid them in our kennel. And when all the people came out after tea, what a hunt there was for those balls. <laughs> Sandy and I didn't say anything. We just watched. And then, will you believe it, Gillian came up to our kennel, as she sometimes does, and found all the balls. And Mistress gave her a penny for finding them, but we didn't get a penny for hiding them. We aren't very happy. A chewed up ball from Bob's. 12th of May. Dear children, this morning, six white ducks came swimming down our little stream from the next door garden. They landed on the bank of our long pond and waddled into the kitchen garden. Mistress saw them there, eating our lettuces, and she called to me. Bobs, Bobs, she said. The ducks are in the garden. Go and shoo them. There's a good dog. I'm too busy. Well, I thought, getting up. I know Mistress is fond of birds and animals and gives us dogs blankets if we are cold. But whatever does she want to give shoes to the ducks for? And fancy sending me to shoe them. Does she think I'm a blacksmith or a cobbler or what? Well, well, I'm an obedient dog. I'd better shoe them, I suppose. So I went into the nursery and hunted about for some of Imogen's old slippers. I thought Mistress's shoes would be too big. I found a pair of green bedroom slippers with rabbits stitched on the toes and a pair of old galoshes, but that was all I could find. So I took them downstairs to my mouth and went to shoe the ducks, but they just wouldn't lift up their feet to be shooed. They quacked at me and one of them pecked the tip of my nose and they, they all got into the water again and swam back home without shoes. And and will you believe it, when Mistress came up the garden and found the slippers and the lettuces, she was really cross with me. They're shoes for ducks, I said. You told me to shoe them. I didn't mean that kind of shoeing, said Mistress. I meant this kind. Shoe, Bob, shoe, shoe. And she shoved me all round the garden. Dear, dear, I wish people would say what they mean. Two shoes from Bob's. 27th of May. Dear children, this is the story of a bone. I found it down at the farm. It was a fine old bone, very smelly, and I carried it to the old thatch. I left it in the middle of the grass, and Mistress saw it and said, What a dirty old bone! I shouldn't like Bob's to have it. And she put it in the dustbin. But I tipped the lid off with my nose, and I got it out. <laughs> Mistress found it on the grass and said, Goodness, there's that bone again. And this time she put it in the coal scuttle, meaning to burn it when there was a fire in the kitchen. But I found it in the scuttle and quickly carried it off. I gnawed it on the grass and forgot it again, and Mistress found it once more and was quite cross. Gracious me, she said, here's her awful bone again. However does it keep turning up? So she took it and buried it in a corner. But I dug it up and I gnawed it on the grass again. And Mistress couldn't believe her eyes when she saw it lying there once more. <laughs> that bone is bewitched, she said. It, it, it keeps coming onto the grass, no matter what I do with it. She took it and threw it on the rubbish heap for the gardener to burn. But... Then I found it again and gnawed it on the grass. And this time, when Mistress found it, she wouldn't touch it. It's enchanted, she said. Bobs, Bobs, come and eat this old bone. <laughs> so up I ran and gnawed the bone again. And it is still in the grass, boys and girls. But Mistress has given up throwing it away. Hmm. A naughty gnaw from Bobs.